then. Or yeah. not difficult, but if you'd only ever seen Sledgehammer, you might have had a little bit of trouble. Sure, sure. Um, just trying to think if there's any other questions I've got about Peter Gabriel and the way he looks. Um, what does but he, I'm, not, does I'm he... not Peter Gabriel. No, I know. No, oh, I know, sorry. I know. But yeah. uh, I'm just thinking a lot of people are you know, Gabriel fans. They might have questions um, about him. Just trying to make sure. I'm trying to get myself in the mindset of any Gabriel fan. <laughs> what does he does he would, would he normally wear a suit on stage or would he wear like a smock? Because uh, he's quite a sort of sort of no, he, on the front. He, wear, he wears all black with great big trench boots. Okay, interesting. And he skips he skips in the trench boots. No, blinded me by science. We played a couple of weeks back. That was Thomas Dolby. Yeah. Uh, for, for those that are just tuned in, Louis C.K.'s American video is sat so far away from the microphone that he's just a sort of distant um, North Atlantic voice, um, but he asked a question. Um, why don't we have more music? Because I feel like this is not... You've interrupted me, my flow. I was just obsessed with Gabriel now. I've offended Charlie and... No, 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 I'm fine. Don't no worry, it takes much more than that. Um, Charlie, what, what else are you going to play for? Uh, we're going to play a song just to recently uh, written one called Tongue Tongue. Brilliant, thank you. Charlie Winston, fantastic. Thank you so much. Apologies, apologies for getting sidetracked asking you questions about Peter Gabriel before. Uh, let me ask you some questions about you. Do you prefer Genesis with Peter Gabriel <laughs> or his? Uh, <laughs> um, and there's an album. I'm right in saying Make Way. Yeah. Uh, is that that's available? Are, they, are both those tunes on there? Uh, no. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh, just like a hobo. Just like a hobo, yeah. right. And that's a new track that we've just heard. That's just a recently written one, yeah, mostly. I've been spending a lot of time in Paris, so um, it's kind of about my frustrations of trying to speak French, knowing a little bit of Spanish. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the two getting blue. And, uh, yeah, when it comes to the crucial moment of saying something really good, it always ends up coming out wrong. Sure. I can relate to that. Um, just listen back to this interview. Yeah. Uh, not <laughs> see me doing that previously. I hope I haven't offended with all the Gabriel questions. No, it's no, no. To, you know, it's an enigma. <laughs> um, so uh, yes, yeah, so the album's called Make Way, and is also the, you're releasing the single, which is which. Is the, well, the we're releasing we're, we're releasing the record, and uh, we just I've just been in Paris recording because there's a French label that we've licensed my music to for, for the next record, which is a kind of um, uh, a mix of the, the Make Way and a new record, yeah. um, and we're releasing like a hobo just in just in France for this month as a single, and then um, <clears throat> and the record in later this year. And uh, just basically going to be working fast at the moment, and then eventually we're going to come back to England, just work it bit by bit, a little bit more independently than, you know, going for this sort of big blast big everywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, brilliant. Well, listen, um, we've really enjoyed it. We're big fans of the show, so thank you so Great. much. Thank you very Another much. round of applause for Charlie. Thank you. BBC Six Music. George Lamb. Swedish songbird Licky Lee and her new single Breaking It Up, released on August the 11th. We'll be back after the news with uh, new music from Kings of Leon and The Streets. Back after the news. On digital. On digital. Online. Dubstar stars from their 1995 album Disgraceful. Steve Show, Six Music with me, Steve Merchant and uh, my gang here. We'll be listening to some of the brand new tunes that have landed into the pigeonhole in a second. Uh, we're still here with uh, Louis C.K. Um... Louis, you, of course, are now um, best friends with a colleague of mine, Ricky Gervais. Um, <laughs> you would not, he would not be aware of you if it weren't for me. I, I very much flagged you up to him. He checked right. out on YouTube. Um, you're now best buddies. Um, this happens a lot. I, he didn't watch The Sopranos. I, uh, I told him to watch it. He watched it. Ended up going to the set, yeah. hanging out with them on the right. set, befriending some of them. I think he's actually now in the mob. He's in like the an honorary, he's Soprano. He's an yeah. honorary mobster. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, that's pretty much how it works. I understand. Yeah. I don't I play my No, it's rules. funny because I'm I met you guys, uh, I told you this the other night that I met you at an HBO party um, uh, two or three years ago or something, because when I, I saw The Office, it's the greatest thing I ever saw, it's yeah, just... Yeah, yeah. No, good, no, you man of... You're good, just tired of hearing it, right? No, I just, no, you know, it's, no, it's, carry on. It's, <laughs> it's my favorite thing, and I just... Sure, it, yeah, it, of course it's... <laughs> no, well, go on, go on, go on, go on. Carry on, come on, quick. So I was at uh, this HBO party and somebody said, I'm going to introduce you to Steve Merchant and, and Ricky, and I really wanted to. I wanted to meet you more because I had the sense that you were the smart one. Yeah. He was just a buffoon who knew how to be on camera. Sure. Um, not that he's stupid or you don't know how to be on camera, but a little bit okay. of both is probably true. <laughs> uh, but so... Uh, uh, they somebody dra dragged me over, and, I, and I, I thought I was under the impression you guys wanted to meet me, but you had no idea who no, I was. Didn't care. 
No, didn't care. Really didn't care. I remember because I remember thinking, "Who's this lot?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was, and I, you guys both shook hands with me very barely. Just sure. gave me your the two. That's what sort of limp wrist my hands. <laughs> just that sort of like jiggled my hand like it was a set of keys, and, <laughs> and then looked around for anything else to focus on, and I felt horrible. And then, like uh, six months later, somebody told me my manager, not just somebody on the street, <laughs> yeah. a streetcar operator. <laughs> Ted, uh, Ricky saw you on YouTube, you're his favorite comic, he wants to put you in his movie, yeah. playing his best friend. So I was amazed, and then I got to meet you, I was I always wanted to meet you. Yeah, no, like, I make magic happen for people, yeah. you know, I bring people together. Yeah. I'm a good guy. Um, but the Times said that Ricky and I, in real life, are best friends, which is embarrassing, it's just not true. Sure. I don't know Ricky that well, I mean, we're, we get along great, but I don't. I've spent a total of about 80 minutes with him. Yes. <laughs> so, it's not a best friend. That's a pretty long uh, friend, isn't it, in showbiz circles? Ooh, that's a bit of I sad guess time. so, 80 isn't minutes. It? Ooh, I took a swipe there at uh, yeah. show business. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, it's about time someone did. I Put know. show business back in its box. The uh, sacred cow. <laughs> show business. Um, we have the, uh, as I say, our series of Inside the Actors Studio style questions. Okay. Just gonna, it might help us get, uh, okay. get used to you. Um, here's a question. What would you like to apologize for? Can I direct you specifically? Specifically to some of the things you were saying earlier. Yeah. That might be worth apologizing for. <laughs> sure, sure. If you could just give us a kind of blanket apology for some of the... I know. could, I could blanket. I'd like to... I should make a blanket apology every every week or so. Yeah. <laughs> for everything I've done and said. But I think it's difficult if you've not seen your live show where you kind of you use certain terms in a way that's creative and interesting and, yeah. and mocks them and yet is liberal-minded and quite intricate. It's difficult when you come on in a half-baked way on the radio. Yes. That can sometimes seem like you're, um, you're a bigot. But that's we should point true. out that's not the case. I'm not a bigot, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think so. <laughs> if I am, I'm not, I feel pretty good about who I am, so sure. that, uh, technically if I am a bigot, I'm not. Okay. I'm not sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you like to ban? Ban? Uh, oh, God. I don't know, anything I say is going to sound like a, just a pet peeve thing, and I... <clears throat> I'd like to ban... Uh, crabs, you know? <laughs> Is it called the same thing here? Crabs? You mean like the seafood? Those. No, the disease <laughs> okay. in your pure hair. <laughs> Do you like to ban that? Yeah. Okay. I only had it once when I was like 19, but I would like to ban it. Okay. <laughs> what advice I would you- I think it is banned. I don't think it's like legal to have- well, anyway, go ahead. What advice would you give your uh, teenage self? Uh... Just, uh... Just kill yourself now. <laughs> kill yourself now. <laughs> The good does not outweigh the bad for the next tw 20 years. Yeah. Um, beware of crabs. Yeah. 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 Um, if you could jump into any film and live the life in that film for the rest of your life, what would that film be? Uh, I think it would be that movie Purple Rose of Cairo. Because that's, <laughs> because because that's, that's what he same, does. That's the same premise. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And so that I could do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then go in and out of whatever movies. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you could exchange lives with anyone, what would, what, who would you exchange life with? Uh, you right now. Perfect. Great. No, you're in. Because that's me. close enough. I'd just go to your house and see what you had. Kind of stuff you have. <laughs> I'd have your keys. What, what wakes you up in a cold sweat? What's your sort of recurring nightmare? Oh, I had recently had a nightmare where it was, it's not a recurring, but uh, I I was, I went to, well, about a month before this, I went to a hospital because I had a very bad back pain that my sister who was a doctor said might be a kidney stone. So I went to the hospital and it wasn't, it was just bad back and they gave me Percocet and I started taking it recreationally because... Uh, I never really have gotten addicted to anything, so I thought, I'm, I'll be fine. Sure. And uh, after about two weeks, I'm like, I take Percocet all the time right now. Right. And one night I went to sleep and I woke up, uh, so I dreamt that somebody punched me in the chest really hard uh, three times. And I woke up and my chest actually hurt and I realized I just had a very bad chest pain. <laughs> Jeez. And I incorporated it into a dream because I'm a creative person. <laughs> yeah. And um, so I flushed the Percocet down the toilet. And I haven't taken any. You know, and I just stayed away from No, that's good. And that's good advice to anyone listening. Yeah. Stay and away from I was in a cold sweat, and I think I might have like died in my sleep for a second. I don't know what happened. I definitely had like a heart not okay thing. But we should point out to anyone listening that um, yeah. there are other prescription drugs available to get addicted to. <laughs> should sure. you wish to. That are fine. Um, and also, finally, uh, what past deed would you like to uh, go back and change? Oh, God. These are all regret questions. Yeah. They're all just terrible regret questions. What past deed would I like to change? Uh... I think I'd like to, uh, um, oh, there's so many. What's number <laughs> one? 
I think the time I was in my grandmother's house and I was four, and I had to uh, I was in the bathroom and I had to both pee and poop. Sure. Number one or number two. I don't know why. They, I don't know why they call that one number two because it's easily my favorite. I don't know why they got <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was taught that little boys pee sitting standing up and right. girls, and I had to do both. Oh so come I, on! All right, I know where the rest of this is. Yeah, I know what yeah, happens here. Thank you. <laughs> crapped on the floor. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Great. I figured that. Out. I, think... I figured that. Out. Yeah. <laughs> And it was such an awful moment of shame, and it sure. started a spiral of shame that <laughs> yeah. leads directly to, to, to today. this moment right now. So I think if I had managed to not pooped on the floor in my grandmother's house, <laughs> you wouldn't be where you are now. Right now, no, I wouldn't be. Here Maybe right you'd now. be the doctor, and it would be your exactly. sister side here. Yeah. I think I'd be, in, I'd be like a lawyer or something. Wow, your parents must be so disappointed. They are. No, they, they're not, because they. Not in her. After I pooped on the floor, I think they. Figured I was going to be a loser. Sure. So the fact that I'm doing anything, that's, sure. they're very they're happy. happy. Yeah. Listen, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. We need to uh, listen to sure. a couple of new tunes and give our opinion of them. Um, yeah. um, poop or pee will be um, the verdict that okay. you'll have on Kings of Leon. Brand new track from the new Kings of Leon album. That track free to download from their website. It's called Crawl. And the first single, Proper Sex on Fire, is out digitally September uh, 8th and physically uh, 15th of September. Steve Show 6 Music, we're just listening to some new tunes giving our verdict. Uh, it's a good way of filling up the last 10 minutes of the show. Uh, Harry, what's your opinion? Um, yeah, that's their step up to big stadium rock, isn't it? That's the big swirling uh, set opener when everyone looks at each other and goes, Oh God, I wish you're going to play one of the quick ones soon. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, it was okay. It wasn't great, though, was it? Didn't like it? Um, I don't imagine, Rufus, that you went with it. It's a bit of a dirge for you. It was a bit. And I've got to say, uh, the name Sex on Fire is the stupidest name I've ever heard for a pop single. Um, so I'm not looking forward to hearing that any more than I enjoyed hearing that. Blimey, you slammed yeah, I'm slamming it. You sound like he was doing a strange Ozzy Osbourne impression as well a lot of the time, uh, which was a bit weird. Complete with Brummy I'm looking daggers at you right now. Ooh. Yeah, because I thought that was amazing. The four words I have written down are dirty, dark, sweaty, grimy. And those I are good things? That, oh, they're brilliant. I imagine that in some sort of underground club where all the girls are glistening, not with sweat, but this amazing iridescence of beauty. And everyone's wow. just too close and it's hot. Smell of ice. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, probably a bit too much. And Louis commented that it was a bit Aerosmithy, and I think it's Aerosmith without the shtick. It's what they maybe could have been if they weren't that bit too silly. Louis, I imagine that you've got nothing to say now that Sammy stole your Aerosmith <laughs> comment. That's what I was going to say. I was going to hit that one out of the park. <laughs> 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 if they sound like Aerosmith. That's it. <laughs> <clears throat> That's it. Well, no, and uh, yeah, it was a little kind of. It was Wagnerian. We got a new single from the streets after this. Monday night. On no. New single. Uh, is it a single? New single from the streets, or is it just from the new album? Just from the new album, Everything is Borrowed, which is out on the September the 15th. Uh, well, I think we've already got Louis' opinion. You weren't happy. You, this is your first introduction to the streets. That's the worst thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Big words. So what did you yeah. like in particular? I just, uh, I gotta go back to faggot. I'm sorry. <laughs> you mean this in a kind of pejorative <laughs> sorry. sense? No, I can't say it. All right. I didn't know there was a problem here. Um, no, I'm just really not enjoying that. He's just uh, reciting stupid things <laughs> over... Rappy music, so I just guess I don't didn't like it. Um, Sorry, Rufus, do you uh, do you share that opinion? I've got, I've had a, uh, a revelation about uh, about hip hop, Steve, and rap in general with this song. Uh, most of the rap that I really like, uh, it, it I can't I can't hear what all the words are because they're going too fast. They're going faster than normal speech, and I think that's exciting and exhilarating to listen to. And it takes me two or three listens to get the words. Yeah. He's rapping at exactly half speed, from what I can tell in this song, <laughs> and he's actually proved that rapping at half speed doesn't work because if you have to wait for 